Today I'm going to be breaking down a light meter. So first off, what is a light meter? Well for starters, here's a little history lesson. Before digital cameras and HD onboard monitors, we had film. Film was the medium used in all major movies. With film, you didn't have any monitors showing you your image in real time. You just had an optical viewfinder. So the only way to know if your shot was going to be dark or too bright or just right was by using a light meter. So fast forward to now, you might be asking, well, if we have monitors, do we really need to know how to use a light meter? And I think so. You know, monitors can be deceiving. If they're not calibrated correctly, you might be looking at a version of your footage or your image that's either deceivingly bright or dark. And the last thing you want to do is get into post-production and wonder why your footage is under or overexposed. And a light meter will never lie. So in today's breakdown, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to show you what a light meter is, how it can function, and how you can use it to improve your work as a cinematographer. A quick disclaimer, when kind of discussing a light meter, there is a lot of technical jargon that I do think is important, but for the sake of just education and kind of understanding that a lot of you watching this have probably never really used a light meter or have never really set one up, I think that technical stuff can sort of discourage people from using it. I mean, for instance, a light meter functions off of 18% gray and certain cameras have different IREs and different gamma profiles. And like me even just saying that right now, I feel like I lost a lot of you. So that's what I'm going to avoid. I'm framing this video in a way that's not going to alienate any people. My, my goal with this is if you've never used a light meter, maybe I can turn you on to purchasing one and how by inputting a couple of simple variables into the light meter, it can be a great tool to have. So with that, I'm going to jump right in. Number one, incident light meter. This is an incident light meter. Some light meters also have a spot meter function too, but we'll get to that later. An incident light meter can easily be recognized by its dome. This dome is supposed to mimic the roundness of your subject's head. And it sounds silly, but if you think about it, your head is round and, you know, light hitting you from the front will likely begin to fall off as it wraps around your head. And the dome of the incident light meter is essentially metering light to factor this, you know, roundness in. Number two, how does it work? So at this point, you must be wondering, how does this tool work? So to start, there are three things that affect the brightness of your image. ISO, shutter, and aperture. So when you're shooting a scene, there are two out of those three that will likely never change. Or if they do, once you set them, they'll live there for the duration of your scene. And those two variables are ISO and shutter. So for instance, if we were shooting a narrative scene, 99% of the time, if we were on like a modern digital cinema camera, we would leave the ISO at 800. And this can kind of vary, you know, your base ISO might be a little bit different, but for the most part, the ISO will likely always be at 800. And your shutter is kind of another constant. In most circumstances, your shutter is going to be at a one over 48 or 180 degree shutter. So knowing that, you just input those two constants into your light meter. You know, you set your light meter to 800 ISO and you input your shutter. To do the shutter, it does involve a few steps. First, you need to start by selecting the current frame rate that your camera is shooting at. So in most cases, this would be 24 frames a second. Once this is selected, you'll need to double check your shutter angle. And on this meter, this can be done by pushing the buttons mode and ISO 2 at the same time. This brings up the shutter options, and by adjusting the toggle wheel, you can set your shutter angle to whatever you're shooting at. But in most cases, if you're shooting sort of a narrative project, your shutter angle is going to be 180 degrees. And if you're using a camera like a DSLR that maybe doesn't give you the functionality to do angle, but it's shutter speed, this would be basically a 1 over 50. So if you're you know, shooting on a DSLR and it's 1 over 50 or 1 over 48, your shutter angle in the light meter just needs to be set to 180. And that's it, you are set. Your light meter is now perfectly in sync with your camera settings. Now when you put the light meter near your subject's face and click the meter, you're gonna get a reading that gives you the final ingredient. It gives you an aperture reading. 
Because remember, when I said that there are three things that affect the brightness of your image, so, you know, like I said to recap, your meter knows the ISO and shutter. We already inputted those. And by knowing those two things, it gives you the third aspect, which is the aperture. Now, if you set your aperture to what the light meter is indicated, your image is technically properly exposed. It really is that simple. I mean, I usually use my meter to get two types of readings. Number one, I'll get a key side reading. So I would put the meter on the key side of my subject's face, making sure the dome of the light is facing towards the key light, and then I would click and get a reading. 